Hey, what's going on, chess lovers? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. Y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. Hey, guys, I have a beautiful, beautiful game that I want to show y'all with uh, me versus uh, Grandmaster. Uh, believe it or not, guys, um, his real name is uh, Latimer uh, Rizivic. I can never say his um, last name right. But uh, believe it or not, guys, uh, this is um, him. This is his picture. Uh, obviously, he's born 1949, so he's an old guy. But um, he's he's been actually uh, titled the uh, he's been titled the international master um, in 1975, and then in 1976 uh, he was awarded uh, the grandmaster title. So uh, he's definitely um, a strong guy. Uh, obviously, guys, um, he played more on blitz more than anything. He doesn't really play on um, bullet like that, but he does play sometimes. Uh, his his blitz is um is like almost twenty five hundred. He's been a twenty five hundred um in blitz. Um, but obviously he must have played some really strong players, so it just went down to twenty four eighty six. But that's still uh, a very strong uh, opponent and everything. So with this game, guys, not only do I show y'all of me playing against the GM, but also guys, it's me playing the black lion guys the black lion and it's about to go down guys no problem so without further ado let's actually get started um so white goes d4 e5 uh, obviously guys for all y'all that don't know or y'all should know already um uh, usually when i go to e5 you know i try to do a gambit it's my secret weapon opening for black but obviously guys he doesn't take so i just go d6 he goes knight f3 and then that's when i go knight b to d7 in which we're going into the black lion, guys. So knight c3, c6, e4, queen c7, bishop b2, and then knight f6. Alright. So once he castle, I go a6. And y'all already know, guys, by me going to a6, I prevent the knight from getting to g5. Or preventing the bishop from getting to g5. But not only do I prevent them from getting to the g5 square, but also, guys, I have the g7 pawn in which I want to move that g5 to do a pawn storm to attack the king because that's how we get down right now all right so uh, white goes h3 i go bishop b7 uh, rookie one and then g5 and of course guys we already know the principle uh if white goes h3 we immediately wants to go g5 and of course guys it doesn't matter if he doesn't go h3 anyway because i'm gonna just still go g5 anyway because that's how i like to play guys all right so white goes bishop f1. This is more like a defensive move. Um, Petrosian um, do moves like this as well. Not a problem. Knight f8, bishop b3, and then knight g6, guys. We know with knight g6, we would like to go knight f4. And then, of course, guys, we would like to go to the rook g8 and get this g file in. Y'all know how we do. Um, black actually goes c5. Now, usually with c5, um, the whole purpose of this is to blast open our center, and to make things a little bit complicated. But in this case, guys, it doesn't make anything complicated for me because I know exactly what to play in this, which is why I go D catcher C5. Now, if he wants to go D catcher E5, that's fine because then I will just trade off and then queen catcher E5, uh, which is not really um, an issue. So in other words, guys, if D catches E5, I do have knight catches E5. If he takes, I have queen catches E5. I don't have to worry about bishop D4 because this pawn is on C5. I just pretty much got a free pawn. And this is looking uh, definitely very great for a black because then I have to move G4 coming in. Uh, it's just looking awesome for black. Which is why after D catches C5, uh, he decided to take back the pawn on C5. So again, I'm still great. Uh, I'm still having fun. Uh, this is uh, too good for me. I go rook g8, guys, getting that g file in. That's what I want. And then knight h2. And knight h2 is, uh, you know, that, that that's a typical move that you're always going to see, guys. You're always going to see knight h2 um, due to, you know, he already know that we want to go g4. That's the move we want to do. Um, but we don't do that. Um, we go knight f4, guys. That's where we go. We go knight f4. You know, we're getting close to the king. Um, we don't mind him taking the knight because we could take back with the g pawn. And, of course, we have the uh, rook g open file. And that's what we want. Uh, white decides to go f3 to make sure that we don't push on this, uh, uh, pushing the pawn to g4. 
Uh, that's like a, a defensive technique. But guys, we don't care about that. You know, where will we go? Matter of fact, I'm gonna ask y'all guys, where would white? I mean, where would black would like to go? I'm gonna ask y'all this question: What move would you play against the GM? What would you play? I'll give y'all three seconds to think about it, and then y'all can pause the video if y'all need to. But uh, what move would you do if you was black? All right, guys, for all y'all that, uh, you know, said the move on night H5, uh, no, that is incorrect. It's not night H5. But pawn h5, that's that is the correct move. H5. Why guys? Because we want to hit g4. That's what we want to go. Alright, so white goes queen d2. And then where do we go? Where are we gonna go? Give y'all give y'all time to think. Where, where would y'all want to go after queen d2? Where would you go? G4. You are absolutely correct, guys. G4. G4 is the correct move. Ace catches G4. Ace catches G4. And then he hit me with G3. Yes, guys. He hit me with G3. Attacking my knight on F3. So where do I go? Well, guys, I go G catches F3. Why? Because the pawn cannot take. Because the rook is pinning that pawn on G3. So what do white goes? White goes king F2. And then, guys, I do a move. I do a beautiful move, guys. Where you think I'm gonna go? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm let y'all think. We're no, because y'all probably already see this already. Yeah, here we go. I block everything down. Where y'all think I go in this position? For all y'all that have not seen the notations, where you, where you think my next move is? All right. So guys, the move that I play is knight. F6 to H5. Yes, guys. I actually give up my knight on F4, guys. That's exactly what I've done. Uh, he goes G captures F4. I go Bishop H4. Check. Remind you guys, the king really can't move anywhere except for he could take this pawn on F3, which is what he does. I go G captures F4. Uh, again, guys, this is just like so dominating right now. This is just uh, crazy. But uh, the whole purpose, guys, is uh, if he does something like, uh, I don't know, maybe Bishop F2 or whatever. I mean, if he does something like that, then uh, I do have something like uh, Bishop uh, G3. Uh, the whole purpose, guys, if he does take, then I have G captures um, or F captures G3. In other case, uh, this knight is pretty much can't move anywhere right now. Um, yeah, the knight can't the knight can't move anywhere. Uh, if he does decide to go, it, it doesn't matter. Even if he doesn't take, even if even if he comes here, I have G catches um H four in which I'm about to get a queen. Um, even if um for instance, if the queen takes, that would be wrong to do because of Bishop G four check. Uh, he loses his queen. Um, if for some reason uh let's say um Bishop G two stopping me from getting the um. The queen, I do have queen g4 on uh, check. Uh, if he does come somewhere like uh, king e2, uh, I do have queen captures uh, g2 check. In which, guys, uh, it, it's going to be pretty um, hard for him to really do anything because of, I mean, if he comes here, then obviously I'm going to automatically uh, queen. And then he's just going to be so much down in material, like it's not even funny. Like, it's just crazy. All right, so I just wanted to show y'all a little some of that. All right, so yeah, so he takes and everything, and after Bishop H four, guys, he goes King captures F three, and I go G captures or E captures um F four. Uh, of course, guys, my opponent does go Bishop captures F four. Uh, he's thinking that he's going to hold on to his piece, not a problem. I go Knight captures F four, and notice, guys, um, when Knight captures F four, I'm actually guarding the E two square. I'm guarding the d3 square. Uh, I have uh, rook d3 uh, coming. Um, it's looking, uh, and which actually, guys, that would actually be mate um, uh, by me doing that. So, like, if he does anything like bishop b2, uh, rook uh, g5 is, um, it's not mate, or it's not mate yet, but 
obviously if he comes here uh this is just nasty this is just very nasty but anyway guys after this uh e catches f4 uh my opponent actually goes bishop catches f4 so after knight catches f4 he takes and then i go rook d3 check and guys he resigns after this the reason why he resigned because this queen on f4 is lost um the reason being um obviously he can't come here because of the rook is here um if he comes here, then I have the queen catches f4 check. And if he comes somewhere um, right here, um, well, guys, I have rook e3 check. And if he comes here, I do have uh, rook captures e1 check. And, guys, this is just embarrassing. This is just dominating. Like, this is just uh, crazy. Uh, yeah, even after this, guys, this is just all over. This is just crazy, guys. Like, very, very crazy stuff. But yeah, guys, that's um me playing against uh, a GM, and you know the uh, GM fell for my Black Lion opening, and this it, it was crazy, guys. So um I hope y'all actually enjoy um this video. Uh definitely like, share, comment. Let me know what you think, and also guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. All right, guys, peace. Hey, what's going on, chess lovers? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. So y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. Hey, guys, I have two beautiful games that I want to share with you. Uh, what The first one I'm actually going to show y'all is the white lion, guys. You know, pretty much the black lion opening for the white pieces. Uh, definitely uh, crazy, guys. So I definitely want to share that with you. And then a the second game. I'm going to actually show you a very, very short game, guys. Uh, my secret weapon opening for, I believe it was black. Yes, for black guys. Uh, crazy, guys. So we're going to get right into it and everything, and we're going to get down to business, all right? So obviously, guys, I played against a strong uh, Fide Master, uh, Ferrante uh, 89. You know, he's a 25-37, so this was pretty awesome. Uh, so i play e4 he plays d5 and then i play d3 and normally guys when i play d3 uh, i always want to play uh my secret weapon opening for white guys which is pretty much like a dunce gambit for white uh but obviously guys he doesn't take the gambit so now i go knight b to d2 in which guys i pretty much transpose this line into the white line guys uh so knight f6 i go c3 of course guys uh, if y'all been watching my uh, channel, y'all already know that when I go C3, I prevent the knight from going to D4 uh, and B4. Uh, E5 is played. I play Queen C2. Again, uh, strengthening uh, the pawn on um, E4. And then um, A5 is played. Uh, H3 is played. And then Bishop E6. Uh, A4. And I go A4 to prevent any um, queen side um, attacks which I always talk about this, guys. I even do this with the black pieces. That's why I do it. Um, bishop c5 is played. Uh, knight f3, h6, and then bishop e2, finishing my development, right? Uh, d4 is played. So I automatically go g4, guys, because, again, guys, um, the whole point of me going to h3 was to not only prevent the knight or the bishop from going to g4, but also, guys, just for me to go to pawn g2 to g4. Um, he actually takes my pawn, I take the pawn, and this is the position that I like, guys, because, again, uh, these knights and these bishops cannot get to neither square, neither the d4 square or the b4 square. Uh, he goes queen d6, I go knight f1, he castles queen side. So now, guys, uh, usually, as y'all see in a lot of my videos, when my opponent castles king side, I usually would go with threats like knight g3 and knight f5 and move the rook over. But this time, he castles queenside. So, of course, guys, I have the open B file in which it is imperative for me to get uh, any file in which this is what I want. Um, so, this B file. So, literally targeting targeting the queenside, all right? Uh, so, bishop B6, I go knight E3 instead of knight G3. Uh, normally, guys, um, you're probably wondering how do you know whether you go knight G3 or knight E3. Uh, normally, guys, my principle is uh, if black castles king side, uh, I will go knight g3. And if they castle queen side, uh, I will go knight e3. This is just my principle, guys. Uh, so rook d7 is played. 
uh i actually cast with king side now normally guys i don't normally cast with king side but i actually had to make uh a decision uh whether i wanted to keep my king in the center of the board or cast with king side uh and i feel as though it was probably imperative for me to cast with king side because then guys uh the alternative plan that i did had is uh, maybe I can um, bring my other rooks into the game uh, to do something on the queen side. So obviously, guys, uh, my opponent plays knight e8. Uh, obviously, I'm pretty sure he's going to want to um, put some pawns down, maybe f5 or something. Who knows, right? So um, I go rook catchers b6. Now, you're probably like, why the heck did you go rook catchers b6? All right, guys. So the reason why I did this, because number one, guys, this dark square bishop. Um, uh, is pretty active and everything, but the thing is, guys, I was looking at, uh, situations like D4. I was imagining, okay, if I could go D4, I could eventually, uh, hit on with D5. Um, uh, because this knight on, or this knight on C6 and his bishop on B6, kind of guarding this, uh, D4 square really great, and this E4 pawn, or E5 pawn is here, the queen on D6 and a rook on D7, so... They really hitting this uh, D4 square. So I wanted to relieve the pressure of the D4 square. But also, guys, I do want to push the point on D4 in which I can um, try to start some type of queenside attack. So I go rook catches B6. He takes and then I go D4. And now, guys, I'm threatening uh, moves like D5. Uh, even if he does take, uh, I can still take back. The knight cannot take due to the queen is pinning. Um, the knight on c6 and then also guys i'm still threatening d5 so whether and plus this light square bishop can't really move i mean he could give up his um piece back but again he's still going to have the same problems with um uh, this knight so pretty much guys by me going rook catchers b6 and if i could win another minor piece um i will actually have um six piece for the uh, or i say six points for the rook because the rook is worth five points and the two minor pieces are worth I'm sorry, one rook is, is worth five points, two minor pieces is worth six. So uh, I will be in a lead. And then, you know, I, I'll get the C file open. He has bad pawn structure, which has become weak, and I can attack. Um, so, uh, so yeah, guys, so that's what I did. I go D4. Uh, he goes H5, trying to attack my queen side, and I go D5 right away. Um, he takes, and then I go knight G5. And the reason why I go knight G5 is because, again, uh, if he decides to take this pawn, uh, he literally is going to uh, block the H file uh, with his rook. So now, so what I mean is if he takes this pawn, um, this rook H file is not going to be able to do any more damage due to the fact that I can hide behind the enemy's pawn and my king is safe. So that was um, my defense strategy here. And that's actually a defense strategy that y'all can use in your own game. Um, so he actually does take the pawn, so I'm actually happy right now. Uh, I go D catchers E6, uh, he goes F catchers E6, and then I go knight C4, uh, hitting his um, queen on D6. Uh, and then also, guys, I'm hitting his um, pawn on B6 as well, in which uh, I'm threatening uh, knight catchers B6 check, hitting the rook, you know, as y'all can see. Uh, he goes queen B6, in which that was a pretty much kind of like, it, it is a blunder because I have knight catchers E6, which is what I did. Uh, I go knight catchers e6, and um, I'm hitting his queen. So literally, guys, the queen literally has no squares to go to. He can't go d8 because the knight is on e6, guarding that square. The queen can't go back to d6 because the knight is hitting that. Um, and so my opponent <laughs> pretty much did the only move that he thought was going to be right, thought he was going to be all right. So after queen b6, I hit him with the move. Knight catchers b6, checkmate, guys literally checkmate a nasty nasty uh checkmate as y'all can see all right all right so guys we're going to get to the the next game which is a very very short game guys um here uh this is uh my secret weapon opening for black uh again guys the openings that i just showed you with the white line that is also in my maurice bishop chess university and that's something you uh, opening you want to learn uh definitely um enroll in that university uh, you'll get all that. And even with this opening, I'm about to show you, this is also in my Maurice Bishop Chess University. So if you want to learn this opening, you got that. And I know a lot of y'all come to see my L-Shot system and all that. 
that too is also in my university as well if y'all want to learn that as well all right and the, and the link is in the description box as well all right guys so let's get to let's get to it guys this is a very 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 short game y'all gonna be like what the heck is this i, I promise you guys y'all gonna love this game so i played d4 i played e5 on uh, c4 is played uh and again guys this is a 25 16 guys and you could just um, like just imagine like what that like yo you could just imagine like yo like he probably don't even know like i know he don't know this opening he's probably like this is new so um i go d6 he takes i go knight c6 he takes bishop castles d6 and the whole purpose of the opening is to get fast development uh castle queen side as soon as possible and then of course start to attack literally guys getting grimy with it like that's what i love guys i love getting grimy with it showing no mercy you know this is what i love to do right uh a3 is played um pretty passive so i just go bishop g4 now to normal people this just looks like a where behind move and i'm pretty sure a strong computer will probably look at this move like what the heck is this they'll probably say maybe bishop e6 is the best move bishop f5 is the best move they may say those are type of good moves, but Bishop G4 is a very odd looking move because I go Bishop G4 and I'm not hitting anything, guys. I'm not hitting anything. Psychologically, it just throws off the opponent. Uh, at least that's how I like to think like that. Um, so he go F3, trying to push my um, Bishop away. Uh, the thing about this, guys, I think this move alone just loses, in my opinion, guys. I haven't lost any game when somebody played F3 never got i could honestly say i've never lost a game when opponents play these moves because the thing is it's so much weakness um in this uh move with this whole h4 um uh, or i'm sorry with the dark squares there's so much weaknesses i have the bishop controlling this dark square and then i have the queen controlling these dark squares like this is just like crazy which is why i play queen h4 right away queen h4 check obviously you don't want to go g3 because of bishop captures on um, g3 check and then of course i'll win a rook and then also i'm um pretty much about to win the knight on g1 as well so that's um pretty much why you don't want to go g3 this is just crazy guys um so my opponent plays king d2 instead of going g3 because g3 just loses two so king d2 uh my bishop is under attack so i decided to just castle queen side first you know because guys in this position i'm threatening um bishop f4 on uh, check with a double check because um my bishop would hit him with check with the bishop and then my rook also hitting him with check as well so that would be a discover or a double discover check so my opponent played king c2 uh i go bishop e6 hitting the pawn on c4 which is what i'm doing and then um obviously he try he tries to defend the pawn on um e4 which is why he goes e4 uh so i go bishop catchers a3 and i go there guys because not only do i want a pawn but also i'm hitting him with a discover attack with rook captures d1 which is what i'm doing so um he goes bishop d3 um blocking um he's pretty much blocking the himself from getting attacked by uh, my rook which is why he couldn't take the bishop because this queen is hitting the queen or my rook is hitting the queen sorry about that guys um so i hit him with knight b4 check uh with a obviously guys it's like a double attack on the on light square bishop hitting it with the knight and i'm hitting it uh with the rook as well so guys after this this is pretty much i'm um, going to be all over as y'all can see uh, my opponent plays king c3 and guys Look at this. Now, normally a lot of y'all would probably think, okay, I might as well just go rook captures d3. I'm gonna just win the queen. I'm gonna win the queen right away. The thing is a thing about this, guys, is uh anytime you could win material and stuff, always look for better moves. Look for better moves, better solutions, guys, because you don't want to just win material. You want to show no mercy. You want to, you know, you want to checkmate. We don't care about winning material. I mean obviously guys if you need to win material to get an advantage by all means do it but in this in this position guys i want to check me i want to check me right away that's that's what i want to do and everything so um so what i did guys i played this nice move guys i played queen e1 check now you're probably like okay why you go queen e1 
the whole purpose of this, guys, is to pretty much, because again, guys, I, let me take this back. If I go rook catcher d3 right away, uh, the queen is just going to take, you know, and you're probably like, I mean, it's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm pretty sure black will still win this game, um, but I just found a better move with that, and I'm going to show you why. After queen e1 check, if the queen decides to take this uh, or take my queen, then I will go rook catcher d3 checkmate, right? So that, that's my plan, you know. So obviously he sees this, which is why he goes queen d2. But now, guys, the queen is pinned right now. So the queen can't move anywhere because the queen on e1 is, is pinning the queen. So I hit him with rook captures d3, and that is checkmate. And as you can see, the king can't move anywhere. It just can't do anything. The queen couldn't even take because the queen is pitting that queen. So uh, a pretty, pretty nasty, nasty move, guys. As y'all can see, it is positioned. So, <laughs> so again, guys, if you're trying to learn this type of opening, definitely enroll in Maurice Bishop Chess University and definitely, you know, get into it. And guys, uh, so if you like these videos, guys, I'll definitely like, share, comment. Let me know what you think of these videos. And also, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. All right, guys. Peace.